uh, in the last decade, the different modality of exploitation of coastal resources in ancient prehistory have became one important topic because it's allowed to speak about human evolution. It's, it's uh, central in human evolution. For uh, being connected to cerebral development, for have allowed ancient humans, Homo sapiens, to be adapted to specific ecological niches that have opened new migration routes out of Africa, and because ethnography tells us that the exploitation of coastal area is, in many cases, related with complex social behaviors and dynamics. Shells, for example, in ethnographic context, are related with specific aesthetic, the, the search for specific aesthetic aspects, or it's related with ontology and demography of groups that are well adapted to coastal area is high different from demographic processes and dynamics of groups that are more adapted to the inland. So the questions are when, where, and with which modality this exploitation of coastal resources appeared along human evolution. And in particular, it's interesting and it's uh, generating quite a high debate the comparison between Homo sapiens and Neanderthal uh, population. This is why Mediterranean area is being central on this, on this topic. First of all, we must define what coastal adaptation is. In my opinion, these terms have been used in an uncritical way in the last, in the last year. So the presence of one shell allowed to speak about coastal adaptation. Looking at biography, we must identify an enduring tradition, something that is uh, standardized a long time and may, it makes also visible it for us as archaeologists. And the exploitation of coastal resources must not be just uh, centered in diet and in consumptions of these elements, but take in consideration also technology. The use of uh, coastal raw material must uh, have been incorporate, incorporated in the social technology of the group and these signs in the more general social system. So technology is really a central aspect to investigate this topic because it allows the economic growth of a group. Uh, the uh, technological innovation and the diffusion of idea, which includes also the exploitation of novel resources, is a collective phenomenon and it uh, promotes specific social dynamics. The problem is that shell assemblages have been traditionally always collected during excavation, um, in many cases uh, not very well treated because they have been cleaned with quite aggressive processes and then they were put in bags and given to archaeologists. They were the evidence of human consumptions. But if we want to check if shells were used during ancient prehistory as raw material, we must look at them with different methods, with different questions, applying a lot of taphonomic and microscopic analysis. And once we started to look at these objects with these new eyes and with new questions, we started to identify shell tools more or less all around the world. The photos that you have about Terra del Fuego is an ethnographic, <coughs> it's an ethnographic tools. At present, the most ancient shell tools came from Trinil in Java and are dated at approximately 400,000 BP. In the Mediterranean, we have a quite long Neanderthal tradition of the exploitation of shell for tools, starting in NIS 5E. Um, and during all along MIS 4, and in some cases in Liguria, northern Italy, also in MIS 3. We know 13 sites, mostly along the Italian coast. We have uh, at present also one site in southern Greece, Kalamakia Cave, where shell tools have been identified. And uh, it's interesting to notice that these tools, in which retouch is quite well visible and clearly visible on, have been identified since 60s, but have been always just catalogized as typological scrapers they have been put within the typological lists 
but no study has been ever done on these objects. Try to identify the criteria of selection, the technological procedure to achieve them, and their functional application. So we started with uh, the analysis of the taxas. Does Neanderthal in all the sites selected one specific taxas to be transformed into tools? The answer is yes. They just use Calista Gione valves. And uh, in many cases, these valves were also associated with other taxa that were not modified, at least not modified. We didn't done, uh, yet uh, use were analysis on all the collections. Um, clearly, the, method the, the, the development of methodology was, was a very relevant aspect of the words because uh, these are specific raw material. We must mix together elements from uh, uh, natural sciences and elements from lithic technology in order to uh, use terms and methods that allow us to compare not only the shell assemblages within them, but also the shell assemblages with the lithic assemblages that were associated in the archaeological record. For that, we use uh, a site in Southeast Italy, Grotto del Cavallo, as reference sites because the excavations were more recent with a high uh, microstratigraphic uh, recording of all the material. The surface excavated was a little bit la largest than the excavation made in the previous years, which means around 10 square meters, that allowed to collect more than 100, there are 126 shell tools uh, closed in one single layer, which means an homogeneous and closed context that was interesting for us to create a sort of work of reference. As you can see, in this layer we have different taxas that we have found that, that suggest the fragmentation of the coast by Neanderthal, but just Calisagione was, was retouched. Here you have some examples of these tools. Clearly the first uh, works was to check if this modification that you can see on the external edge were related to anthropic retouch, anthropic modification, or to trampling or activity related to the opening of the valves. We could exclude natural phenomenon or any other anthropic activity which was not retouched. These are uh, retouched elements modified. And it was interesting then the taphonomic study and all the technological procedure that we realized for the study of this material suggested that the valves that were after retouched were collected on the beach after the death of the mollusk. So they were not related to human consumption. Uh, the modification, the retouch that is always located on the internal surface was in many cases and mostly of the cases done on shell that were collected on the beach and that were collected wool or quite wool uh, valves. The interest of Neanderthal was not for the laterality, left of right valves, but for the dimension of the valve. They were looking for at least nine centimeter uh, shells looking at the anterior posterior axis. Um, we did several experiments to reconstruct the technique and the technical gesture for the production of these, of these tools. And uh, we could identify two the application of two different technical gestures on these, on these tools using both the lateral rounded surface and the flat surface of very little and flat limestone pebbles. The pictures that you have here is of one of these retouch, archaeological retouchers that we have found in the archaeological layer, where the pits and the striation of both these gestures are, are attested. This technical gesture mixed with the internal structures of the shell and the specific straits of the shells allow to produce a, a very characteristic step retouch which is well known and typical of some lithic Neanderthal industries, he is known as uh, uh, Kina stone retouch. And it was interesting that when we started to look at the associated stone tool assemblages, we have found this type of retouch on nine of the sites where shell tools are attested located at Grotta de Moscerini in the Latium and in Apulia and several sites in the southeast of Italy. So uh, this technical gesture was already known by this group and was 
applied to a different raw material which has specific constraints, which proposed specific constraints, but that was well known by this community. It's interesting that when we start to do techno-economic analysis of these lithic assemblages, we see some specific behavior. We see recycling, uh, we see a high fragmentation of the Chanel Operatoire, which tell us about a high logistical mobility, the capacity of planning for a different activity in different places, and the, the search for a tool with a high maintenance uh, potential and long life. So a quite stable and enduring tradition, which is somehow integrated within the technological behavior of this community, and so it promotes somehow some specific social dynamic. And we started to do functional experiments and to look at use wear on the archaeological uh, collection. We have seen that shell tools has a very long use life. They have very high strengthness of the shell and high potential for resharpening. They are very useful in different tasks over different raw materials. And a preliminary use where analysis that we have done on a very little sample of archaeological materials suggests that they were really used on different tasks and different raw material. So how can we really improve this research line and better understand the adaptation of Neanderthal in the central Mediterranean and in general in, in uh, coastal areas? The first is the visibility, the visibility of shell tools. Uh, the need of develop microscopic systematic analysis on these assemblages, and that means also to treat these objects and this raw material with specific uh, protocols. The other is to find a more um, comprehensive way to study technology, ancient technology, in order really to access to social behaviors, to the methods of transmission of knowledge and the dynamics of innovation, which are related also to the dimension of the groups and the demographic processes. And a third important point is to enlarge the geographical and chronological area in which we study coastal adaptation and ancient prehistory. We have several evidence from MIS-6 in Southern Africa and from MIS-5 in Northern Africa of Homo sapiens coastal adaptation within Middle Stone Age complex culture. So how these modern humans adapted to coastal area, which were the different modality between Neanderthal and modern humans, and which were the uh, way in which this innovation diffused around, around these coasts. For this reason, we uh, started to create an uh, international network to share data and ideas. And the working group has been created within the International Research Network of uh, TAFEN, within the CNRS, where we are trying to develop novel projects, which are, from one point of view, aimed to look at, uh, still at Shell as archaeological collection, and to try to enhance taphonomic study, studies from an uh, archaeological point of view, which means also to look for indirect evidence of shell tools. Uh, cut marks, for example, during bachery or made by, with, with shell tools are different, or can we differentiate them from stone tool, for example, objects? And also we are trying to develop taphonomic projects for better understand the processes uh, and the dynamics that alterate the surface of the shells and how these can alterate use wear on them. Uh, also looking at different, systematically at different possible taphonomic agents like trampling and water and so on. This is a quite uh, novel research line, especially for ancient prehistory. Usually, uh, shell were looked for um, for ornaments and speaking about social complexity, starting from Upper Paleolithic. But in the last year, we have several evidence of the use of shell tool also in, uh, for example, Mesolithic and Neolithic context in Europe. And we are uh, looking at them in ancient period in order really to reach a novel definition of cultural units 
and a novel understanding of the relationship between these cultural units. Thank you for your attention.